All right, guys, let's put those away for now. We'll work on those corrections later. But actually, there's a problem, uh, number five, part two, part C. It's like reading a legal document. Subsection two. Jeff Waller, Esquire. <coughs> what? Jeff Waller, Esquire. Oh, sure. Bill S. Preston. All right. That problem was interesting because we did it correctly, and a decent number of you guys did it. We're talking about a sample from a population, so I have to use the adjusted standard deviation. So on 5.2c, one way to do the problem is to look what the min and max usual values are. Right? You go up and down a couple of standard deviations. But in this case, the standard deviation was the new one. So you didn't do really this. You did this, right? Does that make sense? Or you could have. Another way is to look at the problem before it. If the probability of the temperature is more than 14.6 whatever degrees Celsius is almost zero, and then it was over that for the last six years, that's really good evidence of the change, because that's supposed to be about as, supposed to be basically impossible for it to happen. You guys would. Now, numbers are not political at all, right? Ain't no politics in this shit. True science goes in, has no idea, just looks at the data and says, wow, something is different. Right? So I'm not getting into any politics or whatever. Um, so this is, this is going to play into today's lecture. Let's just remember this. This is how I create an interval of usual values, right? expected values. It's basically what we're going to do. Now, Two parts of this are not very realistic. One of them is less realistic than the other one. We don't normally know this, right? You guys with me? So uh, if you remember this formula, that's what this is built off of, right? Mu plus Z sigma. And you put a 2 in there, what's the 2 all about? Why do I put a 2 in there here? What about two standard deviations away? What about them? That's where the maximum, that's where the usual stuff exists. I like it. So we're starting to get into territory where we're going to be a little more sophisticated. We're not going to say it's always two. We're going to say it could vary based on the situation. So if, if for example, I always go to this example, and I always have Homer Simpson on mind. If you're in a nuclear power plant and there is a little gauge that has like green and then yellow and then red, if I work in there, I look over the gauge, and it's sort of like really close to the yellow, are you just going to go, it's not there yet. <coughs> it shit. No, I'm going to go, what the shit, man? We're almost in the yellow. What the hell? Are you kind of with me? So I wouldn't want things to get so far away from average. I, I wouldn't use two. I would use 1.2 or something, right? The minute it's outside of there, I'm like, let me get on that shit so that it ain't something that's going to just go out of control. Are you guys semi with me here? So... Depending on the situation, unusual can start in a different place. Okay, I like it. All right, so here's the idea. Um, what I want to do is we're, we're finally going to be able to explain that thing where they say this percentage of people will vote for this person, this percentage will vote for this person, and at the bottom it says plus or minus 4%. So we're going to be able to calculate that plus or minus number how much off we think we are. Um, so I, I normally don't have this. What do I have instead? What do I normally have to work with? I don't normally have, what does this represent? The mean of a population. I normally don't have that. What do I normally have? Sample mean. What's that symbol? X bar. Now the minute I took a sample, just like on the 5.2c, what's got to change? So now the formula becomes that. These are basically the same formula. It's just saying I don't normally have mu, so I'm going to use x bar. And then the minute I get a sample, that's going to change. 
chapter 8. Yes, thank you. So here's the, here's the really interesting idea. Uh, let me, let me, I keep, it's, it's never, it's never easy to figure out which concepts to throw at you first or whatever. So we got that idea. That's not very far away from what we did on the test. Yes? So that's plus or minus? Plus or minus, exactly. Why plus or minus? Because I'm going to have a max and a min. I'm creating this interval. Okay, in fact, that's going to be part of its name. It's a certain kind of interval. Um, so, all right. So let's say there's, uh, oh, what you got, Jeff? There's dolphins. And, and, and the average length, we, we take some dolphins out of this, uh, uh, there's a little island and there's some dolphins out here, right? And the water. That's an island, and that's the area of the water, right? So we take dolphins out of it. And we are worried, we're curious, so we take a sample of dolphins from this area. And it's because there's a factory here that's putting all this pollution shit out there. And we're curious what's happening to the dolphins. Are they having their, their growth stunted? because of this stuff. Are you guys semi with me? I'm trying to make a situation that's not too specific, but... Okay. So, we can take a sample of dolphins and get a mean. And get a sample mean. Now, is that... And so let's say there's a real mean. There's a real mean for all dolphins. I mean, stay with me. So, so there's all the dolphins around. Dolphins over there, dolphins over there. There's an average length for all those dolphins. Right? But then I take this little group here and I get an average length. Will this x bar, do I expect it to equal this? No, even if everything's fine. Even if this, the shit's not affecting them at all. Any sample I take will probably be different from the average of everything, right? Maybe, maybe. So what, I, what I'm curious about is, uh, I took a sample from here, took a sample. I want to kind of approximate what the average is for all the dolphins in that little area. Because then I can compare it to the real average. The problem is my sample mean is always going to be different. So if the, if the average for all dolphins around this area is, uh, is, uh, is what sounds good, just seven feet. Sounds like a dolphin length, right? I don't know. Any dolphin experts? Probably better. Okay. Seven feet. And then I get uh, X bar of <laughs> 6.7. Does that sound very far off? Now, of course, your right answer should be, I don't know yet, Jeff, because I don't know a certain something. I don't know what the standard deviation is and all that kind of stuff, right? Okay. But the point I'm trying to make right now is, of course, any sample is going to be different. So just because my sample mean is different from some expected mean, that's not proof of anything. Because any sample I'm going to take is going to be different to some degree, right? Okay. So there is a true uh, mean for all the dolphins that are sucking in all this pollution. Are you with me? There's a true mean somewhere. And then I get my X bar. It's not going to be the same as that true mean. Are you with me? So that's the true mean of all the dolphins that have, uh, uh, of all the uh, pollution dolphins, I'll call them. You can do it, Jeff. Can you? Hey, look, you did it. So that, there's a true mean for all the pollution dolphins. Can I possibly get all the pollution dolphins? No. They're all over the place. Right? So I take a sample of these pollution dolphins. <coughs> Okay. And, I'm, and, and we already know that the sample mean is never going to be exactly the true mean. It just isn't. So what we do then is we build an interval around here. We take what we know and we build an interval around it. Using that. Right? So, uh, where am I at? Oh, so there's a known standard deviation, let's say, of something. So then I can use that formula. So that's the second part that we're going to have to talk about in a different section. We don't always know what the true population standard deviation is either. So we went into this. I love you guys. You guys are like, is this all about freaking dolphins, this chapter? No. We went into this. We took a sample of these pollution dolphins. 
we want to get a feel for what their true average length is. So I can compare it to the average length of normal dolphins that haven't been affected by pollution, right? Uh, but any sample mean I get by itself is not good enough to get a feel for it because it's always going to be off. So what I can do is I can build this interval and I can say uh, I'm 90% confident that the real mean, that this interval catches the real mean. Or I'm whatever percent confident. So that's, that's where we're going to go. Now, now, if I wanted to be 90% confident that I catch the real mean, how far out do I have to go from the sample mean? How far out do I have to go? How do I figure that out? Let's say, just to help us out, I took a sample of, of 40 dolphins. This is important to know, because now what does that mean about my sample means? They are normal. So if I want to be 90% confident, I want to go out far enough so I catch 90% of the data, how far out do I have to go? Can you figure that out? So I want to catch 90% of the data. So here's my X bar. How far do I have to go so I catch 90% of the data? This is a problem we've done before. Definitely not. Why does that not represent a percentile? Because percentile is the area completely, completely below. This is between. Yeah, so what's the area of this side? Look that up in the chart. What z-score does that relate to? Verify that. Make sure you can find that. There should be an asterisk. Right, you have to look in the body and follow the little asterisk. So if I get a sample mean, all right, let's 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 actually give us some, some numbers here, and then I'll do a clean problem from the beginning, because this one is you know getting a little bit convoluted. But let's say I get a sample mean for my um, pollution dolphins. I get a sample mean of 6.5. And the standard deviation for all dolphins is known to be uh, 2, let's say. So let's, see, let's see what happens here. This is kind of cool. Huh? Are you guys semi with me? This is the first we've talked about it. So if you're not completely with me, but I want you to be semi with me. You see, the main idea here is there's a claim that's kind of being made here. This is not all, all confidence intervals are going to work, by the way, but I want to kind of get us ready for Chapter 9 also. What claim am I making? It seems to be that I'm making that this pollution is going to affect the dolphins. Their average length is going to be, I think, shorter. I think it's stunted. Now, now that is smaller than seven, isn't it? But I can't just stop and go, there, I proved it, because I only took a sample. There's probably more than 40 dolphins out there, right? Again, not a dolphin expert, but let's say, yes, there's a lot more than 40. All right, let's, let's see what we can do this. Uh, and I want to be 90% confident. So what do I have that I need for this? I want to make this interval. I want to make this interval. So I'm kind of improving on that first guess, that X bar. I feel pretty good about it because it's 40 dolphins. But it's still just a guess because it's not all dolphins. So to improve on it, I'm not just going to use a single number. I'm going to use an interval and say, I think this interval catches the real mean. So we, now, we, what do we know? We know x bar, right? What's x bar? 6.5. We know z. We just figured that out. So I want to go up and down 1.645 steps. And how big is each step going to be? You've got to be careful. What's sigma? 2. And then divided by square root of what? 40. Beautiful. Now, this should feel very familiar. You've done stuff like this before. We just haven't put all of this stuff together into one problem before. So this part here, believe it or not, this part, this part right here, is called the error. Because it's how much we think we're off by. I always read this as this, give or take this. Right? If I'm like, I think it's about 20 miles away, give or take a couple miles, you've just done this shit. You've just done this. Two miles is how much you think you're off by, and 20 is your guess. This is our guess, 
If I calculate this, I can see how much I think I'm off by. So somebody help me out. What do you get here? This is going to be 0.54. I don't know. I'm probably way off. I did that too fast. Oh, it's going to be less than that. Point. What is it? Five two. Five. Oh, I'm, all right. Hey, it's not bad, Jeff. I'm sorry. 6.5 plus or minus who? 0.52? Second? No, this is fine. Yeah. Although, you're right. I mean, like I said earlier, if you make everything four, you're fine. So, what do I get when I... So, I love the people. Hopefully, nobody here is like this. You don't have a plus or minus button on your calculator. It's just two things to do, right? What's 6.5 minus 0.52? Four point nine eight? Five point nine eight. There you go, Jeff. Up to now this is cool. I didn't do this on purpose and I had no idea how these numbers are gonna come out. Do you see what, so the way to interpret that interval, I might as well just do it all the way out. You ready? <clears throat> Here's what you oh you're gonna love this shit and I don't care. You're gonna have to write a statement at the end of confidence interval questions that explains what the hell you just did. And here's what it's going to sound like. All right, here's the statement I can make. We are, how confident are we? We are 90% confident. So 10% chance that it's outside of this. We're 90% confident. Now this is very important the way this is ordered. Because the mean exists. The mu it's just sitting there. And what am I doing? I always think of this as throwing a, a, a fishing net out to try to catch a fish. Right? If I want to be more confident I caught it, I'm going to make the, the net bigger. Right? So we're 90% confident that the net I threw out, what the shit is that? The, the interval we just created catches the real me. So we have to say it. The semantics actually matter here. We're 90% confident that the interval... 5.98 feet to 7.02 feet contains the true mean length of dolphins, of my pollution dolphins. I call them the PDs, pollution dolphins. We're 90% confident that the interval we made and that we throw out 5.98 feet to 7.02 feet contains the real me. Because any sample I take, it should be close to the real me, and it's going to be off, so then I can say, if I go this far out, I should have a really good chance of catching whatever that real mean is. I should be kind of close in the first place. And maybe. So if you saw a fish, and you're like, I'm pretty sure where it is, and you had a spear, right? You're not, you know, you're not Tom Hanks after several months on that. I don't. You throw the spear, you got to be really accurate to get that fish. If you had a little freaking net, you have a much higher chance of catching the fish, right? Because you're not just going, eh, you're going, whoa, you know, so you can catch that fish. So X bar is like the spear. It's it's our guess. It's too specific, though. It's almost, almost always going to be off by some amount. So I make a net, and then I catch the real mean more often. So if I was like, guess the average age in here exactly, I'm like, screw you. But if I was like, give me an interval, you'd feel a lot better about the second thing, right? Like, between this and this, a test. Okay, we'll do another problem. Don't worry. Because that involved a lot of talking. I want you to see the exact basics of how these problems work. Now, now before we leave this problem, can anybody help me figure out what does this mean about my claim? What was my claim? That the dolphin, the pollution dolphins, their average length would be definitely less than seven. My interval says that the mean looks like it could be seven. It includes seven. So if this would have been 6.98, that would have been evidence, you know, to within 10% chance of being wrong. That would have been evidence that yes, they are affected. But since seven is in this interval, that's not evidence. They, they still could be affected, but that's not evidence. Because there, it's in, it's in there. It could be so. You guys get that? That's one of the immediate uses of confidence intervals. Is for a rough 
kind of way to see about a claim. We're going to make a better way to check claims in the next chapter. Yeah. You have to make a statement like this. The claim, no, no. That's me getting us ready for the next stuff. Yeah. Let's do another problem. Okay. Alright, so let's see. <clears throat> let's say the standard deviation is known to be uh, 4.12. I take a sample of, uh, what you got, Jeff? 37 people. What does this kind of represent? I don't feel very creative this morning. The dolphin thing totally depleted my creativity. Sure, let's go back to eight. So, there's some people. We find an average age of, of uh, 31.9. So, the same island, I guess. Let's say the same island. Right? We take a sample of 37 people from this island, and we get an average age of 31.9. And now we're curious, what, the, what we want to get a feel for what the real mu is of all the ages of all the people. Right? We can't talk to all of them. Okay, they're too busy eating their dolphins, getting sick. Don't eat dolphins, that's bad. Um, and let's say I want to create, let's create the 99, uh, percent confidence interval. CI is going to be confidence interval. This is called a confidence interval. I mean, it makes sense because it kind of re related to how confident we want it to be. So these are confidence intervals. Now, this is a problem about a mean. We are going to have a confidence interval for percentages. This is obviously a confidence interval for a mean. Do I know sigma? Yes. So we're going to end up with three confidence interval formulas. One of them is going to be for a mean with sigma. One of them is going to be for a mean when I don't know sigma. I only have S. And then the last one is going to be for percentages. It's going to have P's and Q's in there. How are we feeling so far? Should be kind of expected. You all right? Just keep in here like barely do. <laughs> So what, what can I get? What do I need? Here's my formula. What do I know in the, in, for my formula? What do I already know? I already know. Obviously, I know sigma. Check. Do I know n? Check. Do I know x bar? Check. Do I know z? Shit. All right, we've got to figure out what z is. But on the way to doing that, why am I allowed to use a z-score chart? to do that for me. Beautiful. N's greater than 30. Normal enough. If it didn't say it was normal and N was less than 30, we couldn't do shit. I suggest you still do shit. Because maybe you're wrong. Just say, I don't think I should be able to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. On a test, I would never give you a problem where Ooh, if you don't notice, you don't have to do it. You're going to waste time. I wouldn't do that. My God. So if you think you're not supposed to be able to do it, just do it anyway because you're probably wrong. So be careful. So why can I do this problem? Because essential limit theorem says it's normal enough. So now look at that z-score. There should be another asterisk, dude, just to get you ready for it. You're not looking at 0.99. Holy shit. Yes, because if there's 99% inside, there must be 1% outside. So 0.005 is what you're looking for, half a percent. And it should be an asterisk. Anybody have that? Yep, cool. So we got... Where do you go? 31.9, give or take 2.575 of these steps. 4.12 divided by the square root of 37. 
I always say do this part first, just do the air first. Air roar. <clears throat> What do you guys get for the air roar? Now you just add, subtract, get your parts of the interval. So this is a lot like doing the max and min, but we're just expanding on the idea. Now it's controlled by how confident we want to be about something. Five, six. 30.256. What is it? Yeah. It doesn't matter. You can do one six, it's fine. What is it? Okay. So see if you can write a statement like this for this situation. See so if you can write that statement. And we'll see if you're right. We are farmer no, We are such and so. If you don't get that, you don't watch much TV, which is probably good for you. So we are 99% confident. All right. This is why I'm wearing this shirt again, because it applies to today's lesson. We're 99% confident that. Good. At the interval. 30.156. Years. To. 33.644 years. It says true mean age of people on polluted dolphin island. <laughs> Sounds fair. Not dolphin pollution, we're not going to have dolphins like laying all over places. New on Fox next season. We should go off an island. Mm. How do you guys feel about that? If you don't put units, I'm going to be an asshole and put shoes, lamps. Okay. So tell me what this shit does mean, right? I'll just put numbers. This is chapter 8, 99% confidence. This is chapter 8, huh? Only 99% confidence of the interval of each 34.56. No, no. That the interval this, that's the interval, so it better come right after that word. The interval this. Yeah. I like it. And notice it's only one interval, right? I love the people to put intervals. It's not a big deal. I'm not going to really take points off, but it's just sort of a little pet peeve of mine. It's only one freaking interval there. I'll be right. Okay, so before I give you this handout, I want to show you. Um, we're going to talk about percentage stuff before we talk about what the shit to do when I don't know sigma. Because when I don't know sigma, that's huge. That's a big problem. 
It's Yitch. <laughs> um, there it is. So I want to show you because the, the formula for percentages comes right off of what we just did to get the formula for this. The formula for when I don't know sigma is a huge conceptual thing. We've got to get to it. Oh, that sounds so exciting, Jeff. Okay. So how did we develop this formula? We started with this guy here. Um, where'd he go? We started with that one, remember? That's the, where we started. But when I have percentages, when I have N, P, and Q, in fact, I've got to be more specific now. Here's one thing I want to immediately tell you. Um, we are not going to have P and Q. We're going to have something a little bit different. Um, if I have a sample, what do I give the sample mean? I give it a different symbol, right? X bar instead of mu. This P and Q is for a population. All right, you're going to love this shit. So if, if I get a percentage from a sample, it's given a different symbol. It's given the symbol P hat. That isn't me. That's what it is, right? And then Q hat, remarkably enough. No matter if they're wearing clothing, P and Q still have to add to be one. They're still the same idea. It's just for a sample instead of for a population. Are you guys semi with me? Semi with me? But we need this. Because we already have a way to distinguish sample mean from population mean. We now have to have a way to distinguish sample percentage from a population percentage. We have to have that. I didn't need any of this yet. Shut up. All right, so just to go in this correctly, uh, let me put this over here so I can have some room to work, and let me move you so you can see everything. So what's the mean? What would the mean be? What, what was the formula for the mean for NPQ problem? N times P. But what, so now what is it going to be for the sample mean? N times P hat. I like it. And now, what's the in the similar vein? What's the standard deviation going to be? The square root of n p hat q hat. Is that cool? Same formulas, just got little hats on them. No party. I'm sorry. They're just wearing hats. So let me replace this with n p hat, give or take z. Let me replace sigma with the square root of n p hat q hat. There's kind of a problem here. What did what did uh, stay with me? Now. What did this? Let me see if you guys can handle this. Uh, what did this try to get a feel for? That formula, the one we just used for the dolphins and the ages and the people. It tries to get a feel for what? I'm trying to get a feel for where the what is? What kind of mean? The true, the true population mean. We know the sample mean. So this gets a feel for, is it cool then if I write this sort of like this? The mean is approximated by this interval in a really rough way. Let me just, <coughs> I'm just going to do it, so just deal with it. Uh, what is that still? What is this? This is still a mean, right? So I'm still, cap this, the mean is approximated by this. I'll just go with it. Just, all right, let me stop right now. It's pretty decently cool. I mean, these formulas we've known forever. They have hats on them. Who gives a shit? Just means they're samples instead of populations. The formulas don't change. Just put little hats on them. So everybody should be decently cool with this step to this step. But what's the problem with a stupid interval? I want to be able to say, I think the percentage, this percentage interval, 38% to 52% catches the real percentage. This is going to catch means. I want to catch percentages. These are all still means, right? This is still a freaking mean. But what's mu? What's mu? NP. NP is approximated by this shit here. Oh man, you guys are loving this shit. I know it. I know you're loving this. Oh, I look, I look at some of your faces you're like. This is again, this is Jeff deriving a formula that you're just going to use. So if you want to, you can just sort of like stare at a wall and go, I'll wait until he circles something. 
But this is kind of important. I want to show you where this is coming from. This is really, you can actually follow this. Um, now here's the thing, are you ready? So if I want just percentages, what do I need to get rid of? What's the extra piece in there? I just want a percentage, not a, so I just gotta get rid of N. So we divide everything by N. So now the percentage is caught by P hat plus or minus. Now look here, I can clean that up a little bit. Can the ends cancel? <laughs> no, you don't have a frickin' end on the top. You don't. You don't. And you can think I'm as insane as you want to. That is not end. That's the square root of end. So square root of end and end are not the same. They cannot cancel. Too damn bad. What's the bigger idea here? Uh, can you reduce this? Square root of 10 over 2. Anybody remember? Can you reduce that? No. But can you reduce this? Yes, because yes, they both have the same root. Because now you can make one big ass root, and so it's the square root of 5. This shit you can't do anything with. Let me, let me go one step further. You guys remember that? You can only multiply or divide things if they have the same root. But what can I make 2 so that it has the same root? What's equivalent to 2 that has a square root on it? Square root of what is 2? Four. Then I could do some shit here. I can do some shit. So look what I'm going to do over there. Same damn thing. Why did 2 become 4? Because 2 squared is 4, right? I can almost feel the pain in your brain. Just stay with me. We're almost there, all right? Uh, if I make this become this, did I really change anything? No. It's freaking square root of n squared is still n. It's not plus or minus because we know n is a positive number. Right? And then, what? how does this reduce? So I end up with this. That is the formula for the confidence interval for a percentage. <coughs> Just soak that in. Let's do an example. And then I'm going to ask you, after this example, do you want to take a break or do you want us to do the... And out. Okay. She's your spokes going by the way. Uh, here's a quick example. Percentages always sound like they don't give you enough information. So let's say I spoke to uh, 128 people and 101 said they don't hear. Uh, yeah. Do you want? Right. Question. Yes. <clears throat> so that's when they said it's a population for the percentage formula. Where are we at? The, this one? Yeah, what about? What is the point? It's the confidence interval for percentages. This is the confidence interval for means, where we know this is population standardization. Uh, create the 97% uh, confidence interval for the true proportion, the true percentage. So they always feel like they're not enough information, but what do I need to know? I need to know N. Do I know N? Yeah. I need to know P hat. How can I make <coughs> P hat? It's not a hat you want to wear, it sounds like a P hat equals what? What? A, no, no, no. Definitely not. This, this sort of sucks. There's always going to be a percent confidence. That's good. What's this going to relate to in the formula? What am I going to get from this? Z score. It's going to tell me how far to go out so I catch 97% of the information. That's why if I want to be less confident, it's a smaller z-score, I don't have to go as far out because I don't have to catch as much shit. I want to be more confident, I better go further out so I catch more shit. kind of makes sense. The more shit I catch, the more confident I am that I caught a specific thing. Does that make sense? I mean, that's, that's almost too nice. It's a very physical kind of, you can imagine somebody throwing a net out catching fish, even though I hate fish. So you got 101 out of 128 pleased you're done, right? It's the part divided by the whole. So 
n is 128. What's p hat? What is that? Always take these out at least three places, if not four. If you want to make everything four, you're gold. Remember that? Seven, eight, nine. I'm going to go three because I go three. You can go four if you want to. Seven, eight, nine. So what's Q hat then? Point two, one, one. I like it. But take a minute and see if you can figure out the Z score I'm going to use. One minus this, P hat and Q hat. P and Q always add the one no matter if they're wearing clothes or not. Or one minus P sock plus P sock. <laughs> There's no P sock, by the way. Yeah, I don't know. What are, you, what are you looking for for this? What are you looking up? What are you, no, you're not, you're not looking up 0.97. And what percentage is out here? Three percent. So what percentage is on this side? One and a half percent, right? You guys see how I got that? What do I? What do I? Stay with me. I need these two z scores, correct? What's the z score chart? Understand? It's very single-minded. It only understands areas below a z score. So watch. Don't I want this one? If I knew what area was below it, I could get it. And why do I not care then about getting this one? Because whatever this is, that's the positive one, right? And that's why there's a plus or minus in the equation, because you have a positive C and a negative C. So if you look up 0.015 in the body, what Z score do you get? 2.17. Notice how they basically have to give you everything except the z-score. You just take a second to figure out what the z-score is. And they just throw shit into the formula. It's just plug and shove. You guys have all heard that phrase, right? One semester, some girl thought I was saying something horrible. I'm like, no, so you plug this stuff in and you chug the answer out. I'm not sure what you mean. So to put this thing together, it'll be p-hat. 0.79, give or take, 2.17. Notice how you don't put negative 2.17. It's already in the formula, plus or minus. You just put the 2.17 in. Don't freak yourself out. 2.17 times the spread in this case is going to be the square root p hat times q hat divided by n. This guy here, right? Oh, yummy. There's so many ways to put that in your calculator wrong. So let's try to calculate that error first. Let's see if we can all do it. You got to be careful. You don't want to come out of the square root too early. Oh, shit. I like it. Again, like 0 0.078. If you want to make it 0 0.0783, you can. Doesn't matter. When in doubt, go to four places. Except for Z scores. And now I just got to add and subtract that, right? So it's going to be from 0.711 to 0.867. Is that right? I think. Yes. Sweet. So we are... What happened? We're, you got to stop me. 
the minute there's something you don't understand where it came from. You have to. If you don't, it's on you. So is everybody cool with, uh, here's the problem. This is the way of most of these problems are going to sound. They're going to be very short because they don't have to give you as much information. You create your own P hat. If it's bigger than one, that's a problem. You should stop and evaluate what's going on. Q hat, N has got to be given to you. The only thing you really, really have to put some time and effort is figure out what the z-score is. And once you got those things, you just throw them in the formula. And I highly suggest you do the error first. It just makes it easier to deal with in your calculator. Add it, subtract it, that gives you that range. So we are 97% confident what? Now here's the question I would ask if I were you, I'm like, what the, what the shit's the units on this? Convert them to percentages, that's the units. But the interval, 71.1% to 86.7% does what? Contains the true percentage. I call it true percentage, you can call it population percentage. True percentage of people who don't care about the world. Gotta keep those polluted dolphins out. Alright, so let's do this. Where'd it go? There it is.